Houdini 20 is out, so let's take our first look at Houdini 20 with all the new features and some of the things that I've been looking forward to. So first thing that I notice is we've got a new icon up here in the corner, as well as if we open our tab menu to create nodes, we have some added folders in here, I guess you call them. There's some new organization. So if I take a look at this, there's a lot less options than we had in Houdini 19.5. I just bring that up. Let's go back to the build. If I right click, we have a ton of different options here. So that carries over kind of all throughout Houdini or Houdini 20. So let's drop down our geometry node. And if we dive inside, it's, I don't know why it's taking a minute. There we go. We dive inside that, we have, like I said, a bunch more organization here, a lot less uh, options for what we can do. We have some subfolders in here that kind of breaks things down even more. Obviously, we still have our amazing search that we have. But one thing I wanted to take a look at was the Skybox features inside Houdini 20, all the new cloud tools. So if I drop down our Skybox, press F, we can take a look at a Skybox that we have here. So we got a bunch of different settings in here. We can set the size and all that. We can change the voxel size. So if we drop that down, become more detailed. Let's set that back just for speed's sake. We can affect the coverage of our skybox. We can affect the precipitation, the anvil. We can even come in and let's see. There's a way to there's a way to curve. There it is, curved sky. We can even make a curved sky, which is kind of weird and interesting but you can do that and play around with all the different settings in there. But if you want to build out with the other nodes, the other sky nodes that we have, we have a bunch of other nodes here. So we can do a sky field and that's going to just kind of create sort of like a height field. That's kind of similar to how the height fields work. At least that's the way I'm viewing this. Um, it's kind of my thought on this anyway. So if we drop down a sky field noise, we can wire that on in and we start to get a noise showing up on our sky field. So obviously you can play around with the element size here, play around with the amplitude. You can do all sorts of stuff in here. And then if we wire this into our sky field of our sky box, if I come in here, any of these values that have this set uniform option, we can also change to use sky layer. And now we start to get what we see inside of our sky field noise. So if I come and set this precipitation, for example, I come back to the sky field and check on this precipitation and I can play around with this and we can get some settings being affected through that. Now, if I go back and change this back to set uniform and I come back to the sky field, whoops, come back to the sky field and I play around with this value, it's not going to do anything. So just keep that in mind as you're building things out. Personally, I don't think that you necessarily need these, at least from what I've seen so far. Obviously, that may change here in the future as I play around with this more. And I'll go into more detail on this in the future, but uh, it's just a little first look here. So uh, the reason I say that is because all of the different settings pretty much that you have with all of those tools are kind of built into the skybox. So we have all of our different noises we can you know, play around with. Uh, the different noises, alligator noise, we can add that, we can change the size, the amplitude, all these different things we can do inside of the skybox and get some interesting things built up through there, through just the skybox node. Get some really, really nice looking clouds just through the, the skybox. And I think that you can also, I guess, use the sky field from pattern or from map. That may be the where you'll actually use um, those type of, of settings um, instead of, or these type, these nodes instead of just the settings in the sky box. At least from my initial take, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So one other thing, if you want to enable the new Houdini viewport, which is Vulkan, you can come to your environment file and you can set this variable. Houdini underscore Vulkan underscore viewer is equal to one. Set that to one and you will be using Vulkan. I have this enabled here in this, um, this Houdini instance. So uh, just keep that in mind that it is an experimental viewer and you're gonna have some things like this where you have these 
hazing around the cloud volume or the skybox that we have here. So just keep that in mind that it is experimental and some things may not exactly work as you might expect them. Let's jump over to Solaris and let's jump into, let's see, the stage lops. There we go. Uh, so the first thing that I notice in this is that we no longer have this split up. So if I look back at 19.5, can see that this is split so that's no longer split by default in houdini 20 but there's some new things that we have inside of houdini 20 one of them you saw right there so they've split out the karma cpu and the xpu option so it's no longer just one singular karma option you can set cpu or xpu and there's one other thing with that which we'll go over here in just a moment so let's go ahead and create a sop create node and let's dive inside. Let's drop down a shader ball. And we will need a camera and everything, but we'll tackle that in just a second. I um, want to take a look at the new material linker. Material link, not library. Material linker. And all of the new things with the AMD open source uh, XPU or uh, material X stuff, I mean. Uh, first of all, we have a bunch of presets here so we have different rules but we have our catalog which we then can see a bunch of different um, presets here for materials um, there's a cloud one in here which is pretty good um, but there's all sorts of different materials in here that you can just take and if we take one of these let's do like the carbon fiber we can drag that into our material list and we expand that if i take this now and i click and drag onto our object we can then set this as a material on, we'll just do the uh, shader ball component. And then if I drop a camera down, just control click there. We also need a light for our scene. And let's go ahead and just use our new Karma, let's see, physical sky. So we have a new physical sky inside Karma, which is pretty cool. So if we wire that in, you can see we have our physical sky. We have all different settings in here. We can use a location and time. Um, if we want to, we can also use just the azimuth and altitude settings there. So let's just leave it like that for the moment. And then let's drop down our karma render settings. Wire those on in. And now if I leave this on CPU and if I go over to karma XPU, you can see that we're going to get this error that says the settings uh, viewport engine mismatch and that just says that our render engine that we have set our karma render settings is different than what we're using um, in the viewport here so if i change this over to xpu should go pretty quick and you see let's go ahead and turn that off for the moment you see that we have that error is now disappeared. And if I take a look at this, let's go ahead and come back to the physical sky. Let's just crank up the intensity. I feel like the intensity is a little bit low by default. If we take a look in close to our shader ball here, it's a little hiccup. There we go. Um, so our, we have our material that our carbon fiber material that is applied to our surface here. But we can also come back into this material linker. Let's go ahead. Actually, it's fully converge so it should be good if we want to take a look at the amd open gpu stuff we can come to this little cogwheel and say open amd material x library and you'll need to download that if you don't have it downloaded you will need to do that apparently i thought you could just go and do that either way uh let's go ahead let's drag that off for a second we'll take a look at that in another video i suppose but let's come to a material linker. There's one other thing that I wanted to just take a look at in this video, and that is the new things with materials. Let's go ahead and just set this to the Houdini GL so we're not rendering. Sorry, not linker, but, whoops, get an error there, and what's going on? Material library node. So let's dive in here. And we have this cleaned up as well. We have a new Material X. If we come to Material X, we just have this all built into the Material X subnet. So if you need to be careful though, if you use this, 
I don't know why it's taking so long to, there we go. You gotta be careful because in here we only have the material X nodes. So for example, there is a new, which I guess it is a, a VOP. So we have the hex tiling that's not in here. And that's one of, one of the things I wanted to take a look at. So if we are outside here, you can come to Karma and then Karma Material Builder. Drop that down. You see we have um, still a Material X standard surface set up here, but we should have our hex Karma hex tiled texture. And actually, let's do hex tiled triplanar. So we have two different ones here. And this should be helping to get rid of some of that tiling. I haven't actually played with this yet. So let's go ahead and load up a texture. All right, so let's just load up. I've got some textures here. I don't even remember which ones all what. Let's load up a, let's do this marble texture. And this is triplanar. So let's go ahead and wire this into, is this a color output? Uh, okay. I don't know, whatever. Let's load this into the base, uh, base color for that. And we'll see how this turns out. So let's go ahead, come back up to the material library. Let's come to our stage. Let's assign that material. And let's assign that to just our shader ball. And then we can come into Karma XPU, looks like, let's do a restart our render there. And maybe it's not liking it because it is on the XPU. Let's go ahead. I'm not sure what's going on here with our shader ball. There we go. Let's see, turn that off. There we go. Let's try that again. Let's go back to our camera. Um, and then we have this, I guess this maybe not the best texture for this. Let's come back to, well, first let's get back into our camera and lock it. Let's just turn that off for a moment. Let's come back in here and let's pick a different material. It's maybe gonna be a little bit better for this. So let's see, actually those fabrics might end up being pretty good. Let's do this one and come to the diffuse. And maybe let's try this. So let's come to Karma CPU and we need to restart our render. We'll hopefully load in our texture here. And it's, I guess it looks kind of similar to that texture that we had before, like the, um, what's it called, with the material linker, the, why am I drawing blank? Carbon fiber, that's what I was looking for. Let's come in here and let's play around with some of this though. So we have uh, obviously our size, we can mess around with that. We can change the size of our hexagons. It's kind of difficult to see, especially under this. Let's maybe see if this will work with XPU. Set this to XPU. Will it, will it blend as I say? Um, like I said, I'm not sure if this is going to work. So I think that is a bop. Let's restart our render there. Hopefully it will load up. There we go. Okay, so it does work. Um, so let's come in here and come back into this. So as I said, we can kind of scale this. It's kind of hard to see with this, but where they're kind of these hexagon tiles it's very reflective. Let's turn down the specular roughness. So there we go. Um, I'm not sure how well this is going to come across on YouTube, but you can see that this is an outline of a hexagon here. So that should help break up some of the, the tiling here. If we change with the random rotation, it's going to randomly rotate each one of these tiles. We can 
affect the contrast. I think this is the contrast of the blend in between them. So you can get them to blend more or less. And we have the fall off, which is probably the fall off between the two. Um, somewhat more of like a contrast thing. So if we set this down to zero, I think this would be a harder edge. Uh, but we have a uh, triplanar blend, which you do expect inside of triplanar nodes. That's going to be on the tops and bottoms and sides and everything. So you can play around with all that, but if you not want to work real well, not sure right now. There we go. But that is kind of a first look at Houdini 20. My first impressions, my first thoughts, and some of the new things. I'll have to play around, grab the AMD Open Library. Um, I thought that it was just going to be available to download straight from the, the little cogwheel here, but I guess apparently it is not something you have to download. Um, you'll have to download on your own. So just keep that in mind, I guess. Um, I will play around with that more, and we'll be taking a look at a lot more stuff inside Houdini 20 here in the, the coming days. I'll take a look at uh, more in-depth into those cloud tools, um, the, some of the other stuff, the rendering stuff as well. I haven't found the rendering statistics. That's something I need to look for. I haven't looked for that yet. I'm just interested in that as well. So we'll take a look at all that stuff in the future. So keep an eye out for all of that. I'm definitely super excited about Houdini 20. Let me know your thoughts in the, the comments below. And I guess we'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. Thank you.